Elephant Thinking The next morning Steve pulled up to Kayla's cafe and parked in a spot just outside the storefront. A little chime rang as he entered the door, a melodious signal to the clerks that someone might need their help. As he ordered his mocha, he heard someone whistling across the room. It was Kayla, who motioned for him to join her. Steve grabbed his mug and moved toward Kayla. She disappeared behind a bookcase, but he followed the whistling and found her digging through a desk in her little office. So, she began without looking up, how did the assignment go? She continued to search the drawer. I did the survey and I think it underscored what you said yesterday about people not being mind readers. I'm not sure where it's leading, but it taught me something. What did you learn from the survey? Kayla asked as she pulled a pair of scissors from a tangle of rubber bands and paper clips. It wasn't so much the survey, but the discussion it generated. It became obvious that no boss can know and provide the motivation that every individual needs. Each of us has a different motivation for doing what we do, so it is up to us to take initiative for creating a professional environment that works for us, Steve concluded confidently. Well done, Kayla said with a smile. You have proved ready to accept responsibility of self-leadership. It's time to learn the first trick of a self-leader. Kayla picked up her scissors and led Steve to a table nestled among the bookshelves. What other insights did you have about being a self-leader? I don't know if it'll make sense, because I usually need time to process things, Steve said. Go ahead, Kayla encouraged. It has to do with my whole way of thinking about the workplace, things I have believed since I started working, even as a kid. Up until yesterday I thought my boss should know what I need and give it to me. But that's not how it works. I wonder what else I have wrong. Do you have a business card? Kayla asked. Sure, Steve said. He pulled a card from his briefcase and handed it to her. I apologise, I should have given you one yesterday. It's not for me, it's for you. It's a challenge. Kayla held the standard-sized business card in both hands, turning it over several times as though to be sure there was nothing abnormal about it. She slid the scissors in Steve's direction and ceremoniously laid the business card down on the table. Take these scissors and cut a hole from the card large enough to go around your head. By the way, a hole is a space surrounded by continuous paper, no gaps or breaks or joining ends. Steve looked at her as though she were crazy. Kayla sat silently waiting. I know you said you were going to teach me some magic, but I don't have time for games, Kayla. My job is in jeopardy. Kayla replied, I know you think you don't have time for this. You can't imagine how it could be useful or relevant, and besides, it's just a trick, right? Now that you mention it, I hate parlour tricks. I've never been any good at them. I've lost more money in bars than you can imagine. Some people just have a knack for this kind of thing. I don't. Kayla nodded. Elephant thinking. Excuse me? You've limited yourself based on your past experiences, she said. When they begin to train an elephant, they chain the baby elephant's leg to a pole on the ground. The baby elephant wants to get away. He pulls and tugs, but he can't escape. The chain is too big and the pole is too deep in the ground, so he stops trying. As he grows up, he just assumes he can't get away. Today, he's a six-ton elephant. He could sneeze and pull out that chain, but he doesn't even try. Trainers say they can put a piece of string around that six-ton elephant's leg and he won't break away. So you're saying I'm like that elephant? Steve frowned. But because I've failed in the past, I don't even try anymore? Hearing the words out loud, he realised there was some truth in what he was saying. Kayla smiled. You have just tapped into the first trick of a self-leader. Steve perked up. Really? Yes, it's those kinds of assumptions that limit you every day. They're called assumed constraints. What's a consumed restraint? Steve asked. She laughed at his mangled terminology, then clarified. An assumed constraint is a belief that limits your experience. Okay, I understand that I have assumed constraints about this scissors and card trick. But what's that got to do with my work situation? Steve asked. You are assuming you know what Rhonda, your team, and your client think and feel. You are assuming you can't be successful in your role at work. You need to knock it off. This is depressing, Steve said. It could be inspirational, Kayla countered. Too bad I don't have your powers of observation. Then I'd know what everybody is thinking, and I wouldn't jump to assumed constraints so often, Steve said. Being able to read people is a gift, but the greater gift is to know your own mind. Steve winced. Yeah, that's a definite challenge. Kayla nodded. But after a pause she said, 
I have to go. But while you're on the subject of challenges, are you ready to cut a hole from that card big enough to go around your head? Steve took the scissors and picked up the card. To his astonishment, his business information was no longer on the card. Instead were the words, The first trick of a self-leader. Challenge assumed constraints. He glanced up to commend Kayla on her sleight of hand, but she was gone. With an amused smile, he shook his head. Looking at his watch, he realised he should be gone too. In less than an hour, he was due back at the office for his dreaded post-presentation team meeting. Steve arrived back at the agency just in time to do some last-minute preparation. He'd been procrastinating, not sure how to tell the team members that their efforts had been rejected by the client. He knew they would look to him for answers, and he didn't have any. The team, the creative guys, production assistant and media buyer, filed into the conference room to hear what United Bank had thought of their presentation. They must have sensed it wasn't good news. Without much chatter, they took their places and waited for Steve to begin the meeting. Steve began on a positive note. United Bank acknowledged and appreciated the hard work that went into the campaign. Peter, the art director, interrupted. You don't have to butter us up, Steve. They must not have bought it, or you'd have said something before now. What did they say? Steve took a breath. They said it was garbage. Even Peter had no comeback. Steve spoke into the silence. I think we would all agree that it wasn't our best work. I don't have any answers right now, but I do have an apology. He noticed he had everyone's complete attention. My presentation was fine and the effort you gave was fine. What didn't work was the lack of an agreed-upon budget and the overall strategy. You can't create something in a vacuum, and for that I accept responsibility. While they aren't the easiest people to work with, Marol, the media buyer, offered, Alexa, half of the Peter and Alexa creative team said, They're bankers, what do they know about creative work? They probably wouldn't know great creative work from a hole in the ground. Steve was floored by the team's comments. All this time he had assumed their disdain was for him, when actually it was for the client that they had issues with. At first he was relieved, but then he realised that their perceptions came from the negative energy he'd shown them toward the client. If they were down on the client, that was his responsibility. His assumed constraints had limited the whole team. How could he open their minds? Suddenly he had an idea. He rummaged through his briefcase and found the scissors he'd taken from Kayla. He passed out a business card to each team member and said, What if I asked you to cut a hole from my business card large enough to stick my head through? They stared at him. A hole is a space surrounded by a continuous paper, he elaborated. The paper must be one piece. No cutting it in two and joining ends around my head. After giving his words a few seconds to sink in, he challenged them. What are you thinking right now? What's going through your head about what I've just asked you to do? Jude, you're in production. What do you think? Meryl, Alexa, Peter? Peter spoke first. My first thought is, what's this got to do with anything? Jude stated with conviction, I don't think it can be done. Meryl said, it can probably be done or you wouldn't be asking but I certainly don't have the time to waste trying to figure it out right now. Alexa jumped up, grabbed the scissors and a card, and started cutting concentric circles that fell out in a spiral. She seemed confident in her solution until she realised that she would have to cut the paper spiral to unravel it, and that would break the rules. In defeat, she uttered, I hate these puzzles. I can never figure them out. After everyone else had responded, Peter reached for the scissors and a card. Quietly, he folded the card in half lengthwise. He cut a series of narrow slits from the folded edge to within a hair's breadth of the opposite side. Next, he turned the card completely around so that the open edges were facing him. Going the opposite direction, he cut more slits between the other slits, and again stopping within a hair's breadth of the opposite end of the card. Finally, he slipped the scissors into the fold and cut carefully. The group watched in awe as Peter unfolded the card. He pulled the slits apart as wide as they could go, revealing a fragile paper ring. Carefully, he slipped the ring over Steve's head and around his neck. The team broke into applause. I am an art director, Peter explained, and a lover of origami, the ancient Japanese art of paper folding. I've done stuff like this since I was a kid. Marrow looked at Steve. This has been very entertaining and all, but what's the point? Steve sat down, clasped his hands in front of him on the table and said, Elephant thinking. Okay, I'll bite, Peter said. Steve told them Kayla's elephant story. 
four of us had elephant thinking when we challenged to cut the card. It can't be done. I don't have the time. I am not good at these kinds of things. Our assumed constraints limited our belief that the trick could be done, but it turns out that one of us did have an answer. Assumed constraint, said Alexa, repeating the phrase. What's that? It's a belief that limits your experience, Steve said. I now realise I gave up on the creative process because I assumed you and Peter should have all the answers. I gave up on Rhonda because I assumed she had given up on me. And I gave up on United Bank because I assumed they were nuts. There. He'd spoken the truth. Alexa let out a chuckle. I'm not sure it's an assumed constraint to think the client is nuts. Maybe they are. Steve felt uncomfortable when the team laughed at the client's expense. When the snickering died down, he said... I'm not sure I've been fair to United Bank. I'd like to suggest we all give them the benefit of the doubt. They've suffered because I haven't handled the situation well. If we lose them, the entire agency will suffer. Jude looked at him with concern. Do you really think we'll lose the account? she asked. I don't know. When I tell Rhonda about their reaction to the presentation, my bet is we'll either lose me or the client. I've heard rumours that... uh... Grant was going to take over the account, Merrill said haltingly. How do you feel about that? Too stunned to answer, Steve sat for what felt like an eternity. He hadn't heard any rumours. He loathed the idea that people were talking about replacing him. How do you think I'd feel, he finally mustered. Honestly, you've been so discouraged and frustrated that I thought maybe you'd be relieved, said Merrill. Steve felt completely exposed. He was transparent, not just to Kayla but to his co-workers as well. How did he feel? He tended to be a thinker, not a feeler. Kayla's words flashed in his memory. The greater gift is to know your own mind. I can see why you'd think I'd be relieved, Steve heard himself reply. But I don't want to give up. I want to meet the challenge. I'm not sure where to start except to ask for your forgiveness as I try to stop the ship from sinking. Steve, said Peter, you know I don't care much for account executives. The best way to kill a creative idea is to run it through one of you guys. Steve laughed, though he knew Peter was only half kidding. But for the creative process to work, Peter continued, artists need guidance and direction. That needs to come from you. Peter is right, Alexa said, and the place to start is with the client. You've got to steer them in the right direction, even if they are difficult. You're right, of course, Steve said. That's where I'll start. I'll get the budget issue ironed out, and let you know what we decide. The last 15 minutes of the meeting were filled with enthusiastic energy as the team mapped out a plan. As they left the meeting room, each team member wished Steve luck. I'll need it, he thought. What could he possibly say to the client to turn this thing around? And what about leading his team? He had challenged his assumed constraints with them, but now what? Would he be able to provide the direction they needed?